Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Click that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on my post notifications. That way you lovely people get notified every single time I upload a video. In today's video, we are going to go into chapter 8 of Killjoy by, excuse me, excuse me, by Holly Jackson. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. You have been warned. What the? Pip blinked until her eyes could focus on the light streaming in from the garden. The shape silhouetted against it. She blinked again and the shape grew arms and legs. A person standing out there just outside the window. It was Ant. A sheepish look on his face above his stupid wonky mustache as she searched over his shoulders for the motion sensor floodlight. He must have tripped. For fuck's sake, Jamie sounded annoyed, whacking his booklet against the table and turning to his brother. Connor exhaled, I'm sorry, he's always like this, pulling pranks. Well, can he do it on his own time, Jamie said. Now we might not have time to finish before everyone gets picked up. Yeah, sorry, Jamie. Sorry, I know you put a lot of effort into this tonight. Connor turned to the window and shouted, Aunt, come back inside, you fucking loon. He added under his breath and Aunt stepped away from the window towards the door to the kitchen where he must have snuck out. So, not funny, Lauren said, riding her chair and sitting back down. Hey, guys, he said breathlessly as he re-entered the room. Oh, good. Oh, God, that was so funny. You should have seen your faces. Lauren, you looked like you shit yourself. Fuck off, she said, but her face had already cracked into a smile. Way too hold, way to hold out. And Pip, he turned to her, you kept looking, like, directly at me. I thought you could see me. Hmm. Was well, all the reply she could, she gave, scolding her heart trying to force it to back down well said zach at least it was just a prank and hasn't been brutally murdered by an intruder always the peacemaker zach though pip wasn't sure she was entirely agreed with him right now anyway jamie said raising his voice we need to get on or we'll never bring this murder to justice if bobby remy was has stopped dicking around let's continue he opened his master booklet and scanned his eyes across it right okay so now that you've learned your own greatest secrets, the ones you must protect at all costs, it's time to spill other, some other secrets you might know about your fellow suspects. Everyone, please sit down and turn to the next page in your booklet. In this round, if anyone says the word spy or spying in the following conversation, you must visibly flinch at each occurrence. In the following conversation, you must refer to someone as communist at least once. Oh no, it looks like you've left evidence lying around that directly implicates you as the person who broke into Reginald's safe. You left Reginald's checkbook in the billiard room before dinner. At some point in this round, you need to sneak off and collect this evidence before anyone else finds it. Remember your training, secret agent born. What? Pip read the last point again. Why would she leave evidence just lying around? What kind of dumbass spy was Celia born? Pip would never be so stupid and now she had to fix it before she got caught. The cupboard in the hallway that was the billiard room. How would Pip leave the dining room without raising the other suspicions, though, especially after the stunt Aunt just pulled? Well, Connor spoke as Humphrey the butler. If we were talking about secrets, I suppose I might have no one, a particularly juicy one. Do spill, old hum, said Cora. I don't mean to be improper. Connor bowed his head, and certainly I wasn't spying. Pip flinched, and she didn't really have to act it. Surprised the word had come up so soon. Her wrist knocked into her glass, but she caught it before it toppled, before it toppled, catching Connor's eye. Sorry, she whispered. It was yesterday, late afternoon, and I was walking through the house doing my butlering duties. I heard, well, from one of the bedrooms upstairs, I heard a man and a woman. Um, well, I believe I heard relations going on. Aunt snorted. Well, we do have a married couple staying here. Ralph and Lizzie Pip gestured to Zach and Lauren across the table. Yes, very good, ma'am, Connor bowed again, except I was making my way towards the lounge when I heard those relations. And young master Ralph was in the lounge at the time playing chess with his father. Car supplied a gasp again, pointing at Lauren. Why are you pointing at me? Lauren looked aghast. It could have been any one of us. Very unlikely to be me as I'm a lowly cook and 100 years old, Car replied. Well, it could have been Pip, or Celia, I mean. Hmm, no, it couldn't, Pip thought aloud. If Humphrey the butler, Ralph Remy, and Reginald Remy were all downstairs at the time, there's only one man, it could have been Bobby. They all turned to Aunt, who attempted to keep a straight face, stroking his mustache thoroughly. Yeah, so maybe it was, Pip and Aunt, Lauren said, louder than nodded. Bobby Remy is my cousin, Pip reminded her. Well, well so? Lauren sputtered, incest is a thing. I think... 
Though Doth protest too much, Lizzie, dear, Pip said, clicking her pen in a way she hoped was annoying. It's pretty clear who those relations were between. Nice to see you. You're so close to your brother-in-law. Oh, she turned to Zack. Sorry, Ralph. Must be hard for you to hear. Zack smiled. I'm devastated. Well, I fiercely deny it, Lauren said, looking embarrassed, shuffling her chair further away from Aunt Art and... Imitating life, Pip thought. The butler must be mistaken. He is old. We can't trust his hearing. And why are we all turning on each other? It's ridiculous. All right, communist, Pip said. It didn't quite work there, but where else was she going to fit it in? You know what? Fine, Lauren spat, crossing her arms. Fuck you, butler. My name? My name's Humphrey, Connor interrupted, taping his name badge, tapping his name badge. Whatever you called, she said, because I know... You happen to be keeping secrets yourself. I've seen you twice this weekend, taking a piece of paper out of your pocket and staring at it. I even caught you crying one time. What was it? Was it the secret note that you're carrying around, eh? I don't know what note you're talking about, Madam Connor said. Oh, do you mean this note? Jamie was on his feet, standing behind his brother's chair. He leaned over him and snaked his hand behind his hand down the inside of Connor's dinner jacket, pulling out a folded piece of paper from the inside of his pocket. Jamie, what? Connor said, beaming up as a, his brother in disbelief. When, what the, when the hell did you sneak that in there? I have my ways, Jamie said, brandishing the folded note. Pip could see the words clue number three printed on the back. Well, 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 he said, opening it. Thanks to your sharp eyes, Lizzie's, he framed reading interesting here pass this around jamie handed the note to pip first connor leaning it in to read it over her shoulder smallpox variola virus smallpox is a highly contagious and frequently fatal disease it is an orchestrated by high fever and a disascendant of rash that leaves pulse pustules all over the body transmission occurs via the respiratory tract through the air droplets in fatal cases death will likely occur between 10 to 16 days after the initial onset of symptoms strange jamie commented as pip passed the clue to car it looks like a page ripped from one of the medical books from reginald remy's library smallpox zach read aloud when the page was passed to him it was ir it was irredicted by the 1980s pip said oi no time travel jamie whacked on her whacked her on the head with his master booklet why do you have this in your pocket lauren asked connor as the paper made its way to her hands and why do you keep looking at it no reason, Connor said, his already pink cheeks flushing in darker shade. I'm just interested in the topic, that's all. I sometimes like to read and pass the time through the master, never approved of that, called it idleness. That's why I hide it. Sounds very unlegit to me, Cara said. Connor opened his mouth to say more, but then he forced it shut and shrugged instead. Clearly, he had nothing else to offer on the matter. Maybe now was a good time for Pip to sneak off to the billiard room to find a find and hide the incriminating, incriminating evidence. She put down her pen and was just about to speak when Aunt cut across her. Damn, Mr. Chance. You know what? He said as Bobby, a wagging finger, coming his words. I've been thinking this all weekend and now sitting across from you, I'm almost sure. He turned to stare at Clara. I recognize you from somewhere, Dorky. I'm certain this isn't the first time we've met. Oh, don't tell me. We've shagged too, she quipped, pretending to scour her booklet for the offending line. No, but I've definitely seen you somewhere. Somewhere. He pretended to search his memory, fingering the sides of his mustache like a caricature. Caricature. Then it clicked, and his face changed. Remembered? Have you, Cara said? I recognize you too from somewhere. Pretty foolish of you to bring it up, Bobby. Doesn't look great for either of us. I know, Aunt said, but my booklet told me to. Ah, uh, that sucks. Maybe we can just keep this mutually damaging secret between us. Nope, not allowed, Jamie intervened with a small chuckle. Spill now. Okay, fine. Aunt held up his hands. I recognize you from the Gazara Casino in London. I've seen you there a few times, hanging around with the Gazara family. I know it's you. I recognize the, um, deep, deep face painted lines on your face. Ah, thank you. My best feature, Cora replied. Wait, Lauren said. Why would a lowly cook be hanging around a high-end casino? A good question for once, Pip. And her pen waited. Judgmental, said Cara. Poor people like to gamble, too. And this was all before I was employed by Reginald Remy and moved here. So I don't know. I don't see how any of you, how any of this is your business. In any way, why are you focusing on me? Bobby was also there. And what's more, Cara leaned forward. I've seen him there multiple times hanging around with a known gang. And once I even saw him selling a small packets of white powder to casino goers. 
Sounds like cocaine, Jamie said, knocking his police helmet. Wait, Zach waited and, and now turning to speak to Aunt Bobby. You've been going to the Gazara Casino, our rivals, our enemies. Well, it's not like I can walk into any Remy Casino in the country, can I? I was permanently banned. So you've been gambling again? Zach looked generally betrayed. You never gave it up, even though you promised Father and the rest of us for years rest of us years ago that you would never do it again. Guilty, Aunt said, pressing one hand into his pinstruck chest. Father promised to cut you off if you gambled again. Did he find out? Nope. Did Mother? She was friendly with Mr. Gazzara's wife before her death. Maybe Miss Gazzara told her. Nope, Aunt said again. Zach's face furrowed and a shadow falling across his eyes. Ralph didn't believe his brother, Pip could tell. And you were dealing cocaine, Pip zeroed in on Aunt what you believe the word of a cook come on cousin i know we all love to hate bobby but dora is clearly just trying to deflect from why she was there which is very suspicious in itself well he wasn't wrong there either why would dora key be frequently going to a high-end casino hanging around with the remy's main business rivals there was a lull a natural dip in the confrontation and if pip didn't go now she might not get another chance hey can we pause for a second she said closing her notebook so the others couldn't peek at her growing number of theories i need to pee jamie nodded yep sure where are you going car demanded standing up too i just said pip turned back to the threshold to pee and i won't pull any disappearing act like ant don't worry can i come with you car said Drawing forward, no, Pip's heart picked up against her ribs. Kara was going to ruin everything. She had to get the evidence now. I'm going, just going to the toilet, you weirdo. She said, her palms starting to sweat, hoping that that was enough to keep Kara at bay. She hated lying, especially to Kara, who was more of a sister than a friend, but it worked. Kara relented and Pip strolled out of the dining room. Alone, down the hallway, she opened the door to the downstairs toilet and closed it loudly so the others would hear even over the music, but Pip wasn't inside. She carried on down the hall, pressing her feet as quietly as she could into the carpet. She drew to a stop outside the cupboard and the gently swaying sign that read billiard room. Pip reached for the handle, noticing a tremor in her fingers. Why was she nervous? This wasn't even real. None of it. But it didn't feel that way, and she felt different too. Somehow, more alive, more aware, her skin thrumming and electric, she pulled the cupboard open, and there on the floor before a rack of shoes was something that hadn't been there before, a folded piece of paper with the word, words clue number four. She bent down and stretched out her hand to take the clue, but she never made it. Her fingers only skimmed it before someone grabbed her from behind. That is the end of chapter eight. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.